there is also a German video, link is in the description. Welcome back to our list. Today we will show you 50 nice um, tips and tricks for beginners and also for advanced players. I hope you know the most of them because it will make your life easier. Let's start with tip number one, honey from tree stump. The honey is a really important antibiotics. It can uh, rescue you if you have infection and it will reduce your infection after zombie bites by 5%. So look around for the tree stump and try to get some honey from this. Number two, cotton from the cotton plant. Craft some textile uh, from the cotton plants. These are really important for the bandages or for the splint. When you have bleeding or broken leg, um, this is some really important tools, really important item who can rescue your life. Tip number three, the vending machine. Don't shop your first food uh, from the trader. Look around, outside from the trader you can find a vending machine with a much better price. You can see it here, the same food uh, costs two or three times the same price, like you can shop it in the vending machine, so don't waste your money in the trader. Number four, fight the cold with some fire. Just don't step in it. You can see uh, the heat and the cold is really important in this game, so place some fire or some light around and you can have it a little bit more warm. Be careful, it will attract the zombies. Tip number five, glass suicide. Eating glass can kill you and you can respawn easily on your bedroll, but be careful. After you will have removed the bleeding or broken legs, but also you will have a malus on your work. Number six, Finding the seeds, you can find all the seeds from all the plants around in the world. Some you can shop also in from the trader. So just take a look in the houses who look, um, they can have a garden or some houses looks like a farm. And also don't forget to invest some skill points into the farmer skill. So you will have some more, some more seeds and some more vegetables uh, from the crops you can harvest outside there. Tip number seven, brass from casino token. You can scrap the casino token for brass or you can put them directly into the forge. And from the brass, of course, you can make the blood chassings. So um, this is a really good source to get the brass if you don't want to harvest them around outside in the world. It's better to put the token directly into the fire instead of first scrapping them because you will lose 30% of the material. Tip number eight. Search and find the, the bookstores, cracking bookstores, and harvest inside there all the libraries, all the bookshelters, everything. Mark it on your map because you need to come back several times to find the, uh, the skill books and the schematics. Also look for the cracker book boxes, the loot boxes, there yeah, sometimes you can find also really awesome schematics who will help you in your game. Tip number nine, craft turrets instead of uh, selling just the iron. If you have some scrap iron left, use it and make some robotic turrets. This will give you back much more money instead of just selling the raw material. Y'all come back now. Tip number 10, finding the ores and uh, recognize them. This is a nitrate. This is really important to make the farm blocks or iron. It's uh, really important to upgrade your base with steel or to forge steel or to forge iron. And uh, you can basically find all the different ores like this coal in all biomes. Coal is really nice to find in snow biome because they are really black and then the white surface you can see they're really from a really big far distance. So open your eyes and to look around. Lead have a really remarkable um, cubic form. Just the oil shale is really necessary to produce your gasoline. You can only find in the desert biomes. Tip number 11. If you need mechanical parts, especially in the beginning from the game, Open your eyes, uh, look around for work stiff toolboxes. Sometimes inside there you can find some engines. And when you scrap the en engines, you will get a lot of mechanical parts. This is really important because in the first moment you don't find enough mechanical parts to craft your own wrench. So open your eyes for some engines. And 
tip number 12 bird nests you can find bird nests practically everywhere they give you feeders and eggs and after you can scrap them to have more feeders and eggs but they don't really respawn also tip number 13 really important use the knife to cut the meat to cut all the meat and the bones um, use always the correct tool to don't lose the materials basically you can craft your first bone knife from your first um, meat loot, I don't know how to call it in English, but also use the bone knives or a general knife and machetes uh, to cut the animals or the, the zombie dogs um, and that's the maximum amount of material you can get out. Especially the leather, the bones are used for to get some glue and after to have the duct tape and the uh, the rotten flesh is used to have the farm plots to grow your own crops. So open your eyes, look around, killing everything and always harvest the materials. They are so important. The leathers, you need a really big amount of leather just to craft your own forges. More leather, tip number 14, you can find from these couches. Use them, scrap them. And with these are really essential um, resources for this game. Tip number 15, remove the ammo from the gun. If you have an old gun um, who is just trash, you can go in the... Open your backpack, go on the gun and go on modify. And automatically it will drop all the ammo from the gun into your backpack. After you can go to your new or actual gun, the better one, and just put the ammo inside there. Tip number 16. Collect all the snow you found around, especially in the beginning, because with this you can craft uh, your water. Just use and collect some some glass cups, and in the campfire you can make from this the yellow water. But like the yellow snow, don't eat, drink them, or don't eat yellow snow, before you need to refine them again with a cooking pot uh, in your stove, in your in your fire, in your campfire, to have some clear water. Otherwise the yellow water can cause some infection and I th I'm sure you don't want this. Tip number 17. Scrap beds for springs and textiles. So you don't need to craft springs, you can just scrap the beds when you see them. And also always take the air conditioner and the refrigerators and also the ovens in all the houses you see with your wrench. You will have electrical parts and mechanical parts you really need necessary for the most of uh, more big crafters in this game. Tip number 18, loot all the trash you find around in all the houses, all the street, in the desert, between the grass, you can find everywhere some trash. Open them, you will find duct tape, brass, other resources, and the most important I think is the treasure maps. Never you find anywhere else the treasure maps than just in the trash. So keep your eyes open and loot all the time all the trash. Tip number 19, scrap the low level guns. All level 1 guns you can just uh, scrap in, in, in the parts and sell the parts instead of the gun. You can recraft a new better gun later when you have the skill or you can sell them to have more money. You can see here, one gun is not worth than the parts you can scrap from it. Tip number 20, an infinity water resource. The infinite water source is more or less a glitch because you can take with the bucket one block of water and put it in here at 2x2 two two block. You can see it will fill all the four blocks. When it's empty and you have just one left, like because you're taking it with the glass cups, use the bucket, put it inside again and the complete 2x2 the complete two two block will be full again of water. Number 21, build for XP. To farm some XP, there's, I think, no better way, maybe some mining. Um, I think one of the best ways is just to build build blocks, upgrade them, and build blocks, and put them, and upgrade them. Just building your base, you will easily make some levels and have some XP points. Of course, to have the right tool it will make it far more easy to get a more XP. So, run around. Search for some nice tools, a hammer or like here the, the nail gun and uh, this will help you to upgrade really fastly. Number 22, defuse the demolisher. 
it really bad as if you hit somehow the, the explosive belt on its head. You can see he makes an, an enormous damage on the blocks around. So the best way is just to pull him away from your base or from your loot area, drop some some pipe bomb. Usually six are enough if he's exactly over it and blow him up. In my example here, I need some more because he's not standing exactly over the pipe bomb. But um, as you can see, he is not a very really fast one and he's not really aggressive. But somehow you will get him down before he makes some damage uh, in your area. So once if you have uh, killed him and the green light is blinking, you can without a problem shoot on it and activate the bomb because now it's defused. Tip 23 is to pull zombies. This can be useful to farm XP or to put um, to pull them into your grinder base. So in the beginning you can put 3x3 three three fires, so 9 fires or later 9 of these barrels. This will heat up the heat map and pull and attract the zombies around you. About heat and the heat map I will tell you something a little bit later. So stay in the video and I will show you. Tip number 24 is the forget elixir. A really nice way um, to change your skill tree, especially when you don't have many levels and don't have many skill points to invest into your skill tree. This can be helpful. Um, the premise is to have enough money to shop it. I'll show you, I will spend here my skill points in uh, different trees. And so you can go to the trader to take a look in, uh, if you have the forget elixir. It's a nasty green, really terrible tasting liquid, but um, it will it will help you to forget everything around. Look in his secret stash. Usually, is there. It's a grandfather's forget elixir. Shop one when you have the money. Pleasure doing and when you drink it, with you. you will lose all your skill points. Okay, you don't will lose it. Just uh, they will set to everywhere to zero in the skill tree. And now you have the possibility to reskill everything. So you can change from farmer to miner to engineer and craft different things when you have enough money for this. Tip number 25 is the stop block. You can use this rail and by holding the R button or the shoulder button on your uh, console controller, you can open the rotation just putting it around. The nice thing is uh, the, the dogs and the crawlers, I think they can cross there. So I will show you this by dropping a dog inside. Okay, he's looking with his ass to me, but um, usually they are glitching a little bit through this block. Okay, not in this case, I think I need another dog. Uh, so let's kill them. So by trapping a dog or a crawler in this direction, you can see he's glitching through the block and you just can easily punch his head to death and uh, harvest the ladder or try to shoot him. As you can see also the really intelligent crawler thinks he can to cross there but he's just stuck in the wall and will make some minor damage in the block beyond him. So just go there and um, penetrate a little bit his eye holes until he's not moving even more. And tip number 26, quest with zombies. In the first uh, beginning, in the first early game stage, don't use the quests with the hidden supply. Go outside and uh, accept the, the Quest with the zombies, I really admire because this will give you really much more really items and uh, XP, and you will have a more fast level. Select the quests uh, more close to the trader, go down there, kill the zombies, farm their XP, searching for loot and stuff, get all the materials in the, in the houses, and even the supply, chain, uh, supply box. If some additional items, uh, you also can keep them. This will help you to survive the first days. And of course, Thank the you, additional Survivor. fast uh, experience points and the special items you can have on the trader make it more nice. Tip number 27 is to fight against dogs, animals, coyotes and wolves. Just uh, put two blocks over the other. Upgrade the second one and from here you can use the spear and kill the dog. If you have a one hit. 
but I'm just running away with my spear. However, I think you understand how it is uh, working. If you run out of spears or they are too much, just upgrade the second block several times and then you can kill them. Tip number 28, tra trap with a hutch. You can use this really cheap wooden hutch, put it in a door and the uh, sets are things they can cross through. But no, he's just so intelligent, he's standing in front and you can easily face punch him with this. If it's possible, use always trick number 29, is sneak and kill. You will have a bonus by killing the sets while you are sl uh, sneaking. So all possibilities you have, go down, hide and kill them. So you can see, there is an additional skill is um, from the darkness. I think it's from the darkness in English, I don't remember it really much. There's a hi hi hidden strike or something like this. Invest some point in this and uh, you will have an additional bonus. You can see I have uh, the 4.5 times damage just from hiding in the darkness. If you have good access to the bookstores and the libraries, don't waste your skill points in the engineer. You can find easily all the schematics, um, the skills from the from the advanced engineer in the libraries, or you can shop it uh, from the trader. So don't spend your skill points in this. Uh, just look around in the libraries and the bookshelves um, for for the schematics. Another funny tip not many people know is you can put Molotov cocktail through the doors. The fire will spread out on the other side and uh, damage the sets on this, uh, on this end. So just put them to fire and watch them burning while your heart became warm. The important tip number 32 is the spear hunter skill. Especially the hunt with spear or the, the skill in this part not many people know but um, it's a really Nice advanced weapon, especially for the early game stages. It has a little bit more long range. You can keep the sets on a little bit distance and to keep them bleeding like uh, from the direction to, to bring them down really easily. So they are not coming too close to you, they have a little bit more range and especially the second function from the right mouse button is the, to throw it. You can see here. Just keep always a second spear next to you and then uh, you can make a really good damage on the sets. The reinforced door has a really nice animation. It takes uh, many time to open them and after to close them. And especially when you are really um, duty and working, then this is boring. So if you want to save some seconds all the time, just press against the door and put two times the E button, it will open and close instantly. So you will just glitch through the door while it's closing behind you. It takes a little bit training, but you will see it will save you some seconds. My tip number 34 is take care with the trash. It will make noise and put up a little bit the heat map, so it will attract the sets around you, they will listen you, literally. So it's good to loot the trash, but always when you're walking around take care about the glass in the ground and this trash is literally everywhere, it's in the street, it's in the houses, in the desert or just in the grass. So watch out for this uh, this trash. Keep your frames close is my tip number 35. Um, have some wood frames always right to your hand. Um, this is really important in the game to to jump into buildings, to jump over big distance or to build up somewhere. So in a kind of Minecraft style, this is really important for the movement uh, to enter to some special places or to take some short ways. Of course, um, not always is really easy to go on the roof of some, some houses, so just look at the front side like on here, and then you can jump over up. This is not only to go inside, also it can rescue you to life when you go into a position that is set up just easily can follow you, uh, fo follow you. Like here. Just remove the last block and they don't will find the way up to you, otherwise they can jump on it and uh, to the roof and yeah, the, then you need to fight them. Tip number 36 is the claim block. <clears throat> Inside of the claim block, you can see these borders. It will show you right when it's not possible to place, like uh, close to the trader or close to another player claim. So um, will be white if it's possible to place. And inside of this um, claim block, you can activate the frames here to see it. Inside, there will no zombies be spawning. So automatically, this is deactivated. Also, the same is for your bed roll. When you put your bed roll somewhere, this is um, the place where the zombies are not can spawn. 
of course, outside of the frame, they instantly can spawn and to enter into this uh, to this um, room. To remove a game block, just go there, put the E button, and remove it. To remove the the, the first and the second part from the ladder is my tip number thirty-seven. Just go there. Easily you can jump um, two blocks high and you can grab the third ladder to jump over the to jump over on the ladder. I will play a little bit fast forward to show you to track this uh, zombie and automatically she knows she cannot jump up there, she cannot go up the ladder, so she will search any other way. Of course, this is not the same rule for a horde of zombies. Sometimes a horde of zombies can just jump one over each other. I will show you here. You can see they are over each other. Sometimes there are two or three zombies over each other and then they can drop and grab the ladder and can drop onto your roof. So be always careful with the ladder, but for the most cases the rule is just remove the second two. If you don't have broken your leg, this is not a problem to jump up there. 38. The Master Chief uh, skill is really important because it will save you a lot of a lot of resources to make food and also activate some of the nicest recipes, which gives you more health point back and also have some other skills, uh, makes you feel more comfortable and yeah, I think the most important is really to, to, to save the resources, especially the meat is really hard to farm. On 39 I will show you there is a little bit uh, trick with some nerdy glasses. The nerdy glasses will give you in your skill tree intelligence plus one. And this can be awesome to activate some skills and to save some skill points. And this is useful in the early stages or to work with the trader. You can see in his secret strategy series tier one, he don't have really nice things and really high prices. Hey, so just to put this for? up, I will we use some of my it. skill points to activate the better barter skill until the third level. So you can see here the better barter. You need minimum level three to have the tier two activated. But for this, you need minimum level 5 in intelligence. So I will activate until 4. But of course, with this, I cannot do shop the third stage from the better partner. So instead, I'm going over and use the nerdy glasses. The nerdy glasses have a bonus on the on the intelligence, but a malus on your creation. So when you're working, when you're producing something at a workbench or in the forge, this will take much more time. So put down the nerdy glasses if you don't need them. You can see now it's green. I have level 5 uh, activated, so I can go. I can look in his secret stash. And he have new, nice and much more cheap things and some schematics. So this is a nice tip. Of course, if you don't need the nerdy glasses actually, just deactivate them. But you will lose also the skill, as you can see here. Now it's red and also the th third stage is, uh, is red. And now also the, the secret stash also is um, in tier 1 again. Another really useful tip is uh, number 40, the pocket mods. Many people don't know it, but from the beginning when you was harvesting enough from the cotton and you have some textiles over it, then go and craft some pocket mods. You can do this from the beginning, you don't need schematics or uh, any skill for this. You just can craft them and put them into your into your clothes, like into the pant or into the into the blouses or the the coat. What is actually not working is to put it into the hut. There is no no place for a mod. Number 41, snow and stones. If you have some snow and some stones and you want to sneak around some sets but they are blocking your way, just Put them, through them in the direction and it will put up a little bit the heat map. So the set will automatically try to search uh, what was putting up the heat map and will go into this direction. So when you make it really good, you can automatically move the zombies, drive them like you want. This is working with the stones and with the snow. Straw or hay ball for, for your exit. As you can see here, you can put uh, some block of grass just uh, in your exit, in your emergency exit, and it will save you and prevent to break your leg or have some major insurance. 
this is working until 22 blocks. I will show you also what happens when you are nothing have down there. It is really painful and cause damage. Tip number 43, upgrade the second block first. The most uh, sets are two blocks high, so the damage in front of them is always the second block. So if you are starting your base in the early game stage, go and invest the materials to upgrade in the second block first. And when you find like this, then repair the damage. Number 44, cooking pots. The cooking pots are really important. You can find guns and cooking pots from the beginning next to the trader. For this reason I told you to go there and to make a base there. So just watch out and for some money you can go there and shop a cooking pot. With tip number 45 I will show you how to level the terrain. Automatically the world generator will make a really smooth looking terrain but it's really terrible to build on this. So if you want to have a flat surface just put around the blocks and you can see automatically it will go up or down to the next block and with this you can make a really nice and flat surface. Just use a lot of, blo of, of blocks. You can up, uh, pick them up and replace them and makes a really big, really nice smoothing looking area. Tip number 46 is to build uh, floating blocks maybe for your base or for your Horde Knight base. It's pretty easy going. You can use these half cubes, put an opponent uh, in the position from each other. You can see it like here when you upgrade them with iron. It looks like there is a ball in the air. So what is happening now is the, the sets think there is a way over there and they can walk over this. But when you jump on the balls you can see really easy is not, uh, not to go on it. Place some letters here and go up. So, when you see it, the, um, the zombies are coming from this side, or you can put them a ladder or just some stairs and they will go up and they think they can go over to you. But automatically they will drop and they will search now again the way up there and think they can cross. So it's like a carousel. Another nice thing for floating blocks are these kind of plates, but they are not working like the half cubes and the half balls, the spheric one. So what is happening here, it also looks like it's floating, but in this case the sets um, know they cannot cross over this. So going up there, going over. You can see the sets, um, when they are coming to you, they don't will search this path. Instantly they will try to find another way. In this case to make uh, damage on the most down part from the from the base, where all the base is grounded. It's pretty easy also for beginner and uh, in the early game stages because you don't need a lot of materials. Tip number 47 is for new players especially, but also for advanced players. Take a look in the configurations from your new game. Since the early alpha versions uh, before 19, many things have changed and there are some more options now available. And for the new one, take a look around. You can easily um, select the difficulty or how many time that they will have. Also, the, the hours in the daylight and before the night is starting. Also, if you want, you can just um, deactivate all the sets and you don't will have any enemies are hunting you and you can take a half hour or one hour just to look the game how all the physics is working or which kind of loot you can find in which boxes so maybe spend some minutes in this and uh, take a look in your configuration for a new game before you start also for the advanced players it's e it's nice because you can put up the difficulty to have a little bit more action and with this comes uh, tip number 48 this is to finish the first quest, the first quest set. I will play a little bit more fast to show you. You can find the grass everywhere. And to upgrade this, you don't will have just the XP from this quest set. I think the more important thing I want to show you here is to find the place from the trader. Of course, if you're new to the game, you will see the grass you can find everywhere and the wood you can have from this um, dry 
grass, it looks like dry grass, harvest all around to you and build some campfire. I think in less than three minutes you should have the first quest completed. And then for this, you will have the location from the trader to find him. So, walk over to the trader and start to build your base there, because it's really important to have a trader close to you. More or less all around the game is happening around the trader. You have the special items, you have a lot of schematics, you can have some casino tokens from him, and all over all the quests. The most important quests for leveling are there to find. Hello, traveler. And with this comes 49. Build your base close there. Like I told you before, it will protect you with the with the claim blocks from spawning sets, and you don't will have it far away. And I was telling you before, number 50 is the heat map. Literally everything you were doing in the game, like uh, crafting, building, placing blocks, and especially campfires or forges, will put up the heat map. So the heat map attracts zombies. If it is a place is more hard or more hot, the sets will try to run there. This can have an advantage if you want to grind some XP, but also a disadvantage if a uh, horde is running directly onto your base. So take care of what you are doing, which time you are doing, and take a look around all the time around your base if there is a wandering horde. And this is bonus tip number 51. Share, like and subscribe for updates if you like this kind of video. Then I will produce some more, hit the bell to have the notification or look directly on the server for some live examples. Thank you so much for joining and I hope to see you the next time.